Warning, Hebrews Toys Reviews is not intended for children. It is for adult collectors and the people over the age of 18. everybody hebro 77 here and as you can see i've got my gi joe shirt on so that can mean only one thing today we'll be reviewing a gi joe well not the action figure silly the thing that carried the action figure that's right the gi joe carrying case and let me tell you something brother there was nothing better than to have all of your G.I. Joe's sorted out and one uh, huge carrying case which most of the time we've had more G.I. Joe's than what the carrying case could handle so basically it was the 24 G.I. Joe's you could fit the carrying case plus a bunch of other G.I. Joe's piled on top and these things wore out quickly and ended up in gar garage sales faster than you could say yo Joe now with no further ado here is the G.I. Joe carrying cases one official G.I. Joe carrying case and one unofficial G.I. Joe carrying case this is the official G.I. Joe carrying case I uh, found this at a at an antique shop uh, who would have thunk that this a part of our childhood would now be antique collectibles um, I don't think I paid very much for this maybe uh, like twenty dollars or something like that so it was fairly cheap uh, when I first uh, got it it was in really good condition but as uh, everyone knows the plastic that, that, that holds the GI Joe's does tend to crack and sort of uh, bend over time. This says it holds up to 24 figures. Now, you and I both know full well that we had more than 24 figures that the case would hold. Now, not only that, but you would have their weapons that you'd want to put in the case. Um, let's see here. As you can see on the front here, it shows just a generic, you know, them, them running. Hold on, I'm getting glare from the light them running into battle you know they're all shooting things and it looks just the explosions I mean it is action-packed to the uh, to the gills and this one of course came out in 1984 I would have been a little bit too young to be asking for this for Christmas or my birthday or what not have you but I will show you one that I did get for Christmas one year uh, now here we have uh, cover girl which is um, a lot of times mistaken for Scarlet poor Scarlet she had a misidentification uh, because of the red hair but uh, obviously uh, you know it's not Scarlet um, then you've got uh, gung-ho here in the background he's like yeah let's kick butt you know and then you got uh, I believe that is a lot of people would look at this guy and say oh well that's just a, a, a regular green shirt he's nobody but to me it looks like this might either be uh, maybe grunt or um, oh, what's his name uh, the guy with the parachute not free fall um, Airborne. Airborne is who I was trying to think of. And then, of course, you got Doc back here for some reason. Looks more um, Caucasian. And then, of course, you got the leader, Duke. You got Steeler here on the Mobat tank. Uh, some guy that kind of looks like Duke. You have uh, Rakondo. And I believe that is Grunt. Uh, 
And of course on the back of the case, back of the case that shows even more G.I. Joe's, G.I. Joe collector's case. And this is kind of what you would see if you, uh, I hope there's a little bit more light. At the beginning of the show, at the end of the song where they're all cheering, Yo Joe! So we'll go over some of these guys here in uh, just a bit. Of kind of what you oh, stupid glare. Uh, you have kind of what you had on the front of the case. There you have uh, Cover Girl, uh, Torpedo, Doc, uh, Junkyard. I'm not sure. There's no mutt there. Or no, sorry, mutt. Not Junkyard. Mutt. This is mutt. Junkyard is not present. Um, you have. Tripwire, and of course Airborne again, Wakanda again, Duke again. This time they've added Roadblock and Blowtorch. You've got Ripcord, Snowjob, mm, Spirit, and Gung Ho. And that is the back of the G.I. Joe's collector case. Uh, now that I've flipped it over, I probably messed up all the figures that are inside, but you know, we do what we do. And of course, here is the top tray. And I'm not going to go over the figures I've got in here, but you can see it had this tray. And this tray here has like some cracks here on the edges. And these are uh, arranged in, in um, G.I. Joe's that I never had when I was a kid, like Tripwire and Doc and. Uh, breaker and uh, low light, you know, um, cutter and uh, clutch. Duke never had him, never had quick kick or rock and roll, never had um, mutt and junkyard. Now, the wider slots were for either uh, dog handlers and their dogs, or you could uh, use them for weapons. I sometimes use them to put two G.I. Joes in one slot. And now we get over to the second tray. And, uh, oh, it appears I'm missing a couple Joes in the second tray. There, this is what happened. I guess when I, <laughs> when I flipped it over, it really messed things up. So now you have, um, uh, Toxo Viper. These are, uh, a few of these are, uh, Cobras that I had when I was a kid but I couldn't fit them in the other case unless I stacked them on top so we you have uh, Toxo Viper uh, Vult I always forget his name Vulture I think not Vulture Votar Votar uh, Dr. Mindbender Big Boa um, Monkey Wrench one of my favorite Dreadnoughts by the way and of course you got all these other G.I. Joes that I, I don't think I have to mention who they are. You know who they are. And always, uh, if you ever wanted to, you could probably put some G.I. Joes or their their weapons here on the bottom of the, of the uh, carrier case. But I wouldn't suggest it. So that ends um, that carrier case. And now let's take a look at the not-so-known carrier case, the one that I had, and I think a lot of us did as a kid, because uh, number one, it was probably cheaper. Uh, number two, it had bigger compartments and held a lot more G.I. Joes. The Combat Collector's case, it also holds uh, 24 figures. Uh, this has a much better graphic design, in my view, although... Um, a lot of these became cracked and uh, deteriorated over time and the paint wore off. This one is in fairly good condition, uh, but you can see here at the bottom there's already some uh, separation from the... Um, but this one sticks out. This is like one of those, the plastic on the front, it, it bows out almost like they're, they're coming at you in 3D. Let's see how it's more detailed and... I don't know who this guy is. He kind of looks like uh, Captain America. But this was a generic uh, G.I. Joe brand. 
Um, these guys did exist. I never had any of them as a child, and I don't have any right now. Um, it's very plain on the uh, on the back. There is no, uh, unlike the official GI Joe carrying case. Now we'll take a look at the the inside, and as you can see, as I mentioned before, this has wider compartments. The GI Joe seem to lay uh, better. Now I did have Wild Bill. Because I did a review on him earlier. Uh, I had him on top. Here's all the G.I. Joes I had as a kid. Um, you know, I had Tunnel Rat. I had Bazooka. Sergeant Slaughter. Wetsuit. The Fridge. Uh, Letterneck. Dial Tone. Dusty. Dusty, I think, was one of my first G.I. Joes. I had uh, Shipwreck. Lift Ticket. Uh, Outback. Ace. Um... Iceberg. I froze up there for a minute. Pun intended. Beachhead. General Hawk. General. The kid uh, didn't have Duke, so I was really uh, glad when I got General Hawk. Uh, did I mention Dial Tone? Dial Tone was one of my favorites, as uh, as well as Mainframe. You got Law and Order, and I think I already mentioned the fridge. Ah. These are much more durable, by the way. Uh, even though they were cheaper, somehow they were a thicker plastic. And I had the feeling this is going to last a lot longer. And in this case, is some of my uh, G.I. Joe... Um, G.I. Joes that I had when I was a child. Uh, you have Hardball, Toe Booth, um, Slipstream... Wild Bill and Windmill. Windmill is one that I, I had uh, when I was a little kid and that carried on to my adulthood. You got Lifeline. You got um, Steeler. Steeler's upside down for some reason. Uh, Steeler was the very first, um, was the oldest Joe that I ever had in my childhood collection. Uh, he came with the Mobat tank, so that's why I had him. You got Dress Blues Gung Ho. Now, i uh, not sure if this was mine or my cousin's. And, you know, we borrowed toys back and forth uh, with each other over the year, you know, as, as children. And so, this might be a Swamp Out uh, action figure. I'm not sure. But there's Mainframe, uh, one of my all-time favorite G.I. Joes of all time, uh, besides Shipwreck. Uh, you got Lieutenant Falcon, who, when I was a, a little kid, I never had the opportunity to get Flint. Um, so, I, owe, I would often pretend that this was Flint as a child. Uh, you got <laughs> Crazy Legs. I love this G.I. Joe. You got the, uh, the only parachute at that time that came with the G.I. Joe, I think. Uh, besides the obvious parachutes that came with the, um, you know, uh, Sky Striker. Uh, of course, this is a non-working parachute, and I believe they had working parachutes with parachute, uh, parachute bags at that time. And we have, for some reason, he's, I guess he was napping. Uh, good old Chuckles, which this is kind of a worn-out Chuckles. I'll have to replace some of his parts and whatnot. We have um, Quick Straw, which I like to call him Quick Draw McGraw. And of course, Sneak Peek, which I used to call Sneak a Peek. There's a, I think this is one of my very first toy reviews. And last but certainly not least, good old Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. This is, of course, uh, Deep Six. However, this is not the original Deep Six. This is a 2001. Our 2002 remake of Deep Six, which came with the uh, the Shark, G.I. Joe Shark. I think there was a different name for the remake version, but he's not that much different than the original. Uh, so I keep him in, in this case. Now, when I was a kid, again, I used to use him. Uh, before I got General Hawk, he was the leader of the Joes. I had him, and I had the the battle platform and I used to pretend like the battle platform was their their uh, official headquarters 
Well, so there you go. Uh, that's pretty much the end of this review. We'll take a look at the, the carrying case one last time. Oh, before I go, there is one last unofficial G.I. Joe carrying case that a lot of people may not know about, and you can buy this carrying case even to this very day. Um, some people use it to go fishing with. Um, it's a tackle box. Now, I have a nice, big, extra-large tackle box, and the slots of these tackle boxes, get the hell out of here, you stupid fly, actually fit um, the G.I. Joes quite well. And as you can see, I'm only going to bring out half. Ugh. Whoa, my tackle box is in need of some repairs, uh, but you could fit all of the... I'll pull this out just a little bit more all of the G.I. Joe weapons and on this side I have uh, all G.I. Joes all the way across here and of course on this side we have uh, Cobra leaders all in there and of course in the middle I have tons and tons upon G.I. Joes I think it is time for a new tackle box now I'm not going to go over each and every one of these I might do that in an action figure overlay review. Well, that does it for this review. Uh, I hope you've liked this episode. If you like what you see and you want to see more content, uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Until next time, this is Hebro77 saying, GI, knowing is it half the battle, it's the whole damn war. We'll see you next time.